Have you ever been scrolling Facebook and one of your friends is looking for a realtor and they didn't even think about you? Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, it's Rosemary Lewis, your real estate bestie. And today we are going to talk about when friends don't remember we are real estate agents and what we can do about it. But before I get into it, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And listen, I need a little encouragement because these friends are acting funny. You are my bestie. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and share it. Share it with another bestie that may be struggling with the sting when the people right in your database don't think about you as an agent. Let's get into it. A friend just posted on social looking for a good realtor. It makes me think I'm not showing up well if she didn't automatically think of me. What are some tips for staying in front of my sphere? <gasps> All right, drum roll please. I have actually had something similar to this happen to me recently. But the difference is I wouldn't say this person was my friend. I mean, they are my Facebook friend, but definitely not somebody that I am interacting with on a common basis. But still, I was looking just like you. My face, like I crossed my eyes like, girl, you know, a realtor, I'm a realtor. But it also made me think about my practices and where I can double down. So first things first, I just want to say, kudos like good good thing that you saw this post because it stings a little worse when you actually see that they are standing in front of a sold sign so this is definitely an opportunity like i don't want you to get a, like i don't know the level of friendship but i don't want you to get like your panties in a bunch that they didn't automatically think of you because for whatever reason they didn't this is your opportunity to reach out and raise your hand and say hey girl hey you know i'm a realtor and start the conversation from there. But the reality is that a lot of times we don't get that like social media heads up that someone is even thinking about selling. And that may be, you know, not only with your friends or your acquaintances, but even your neighbors, right? How many times have you probably driven down your, your street and realized like, I didn't even know that they were thinking about moving. Like they just moved here and you see a for sale sign in the yard. So. The very biggest thing that I just want to share is that even with people in your sphere of influence, we have to earn their business. I get it. Like they've been knowing you for a long time. They know what you're trying to do or they know what you're doing. You would think, and a lot of us, a lot of realtors just want to assume that people are going to work with you just because there is a relationship. And the reality is that it just doesn't always happen like that. So even if you don't know that they are looking, even before they even share with you that they in, are in the market, we have to be in the habit of serving the people in our sphere. And I'm going to give you a couple of ways in order to serve them. Okay. So here is first things first. I know that we are in a texting, we are in a social media. We have so many ways of staying. I don't even want to say staying connected. We have so many ways of staying in people's business, yet we are not connected. So the very first thing that I'm going to say is that everybody that you can be in contact with, do you actually have their phone number and are you picking up the phone, giving them a call? I just left a real estate conference and I thought that it was pretty cool that one of the girls that I chit chatted with, you know, we are social media friends. We have DM'd each other before this conference. She reached out to me and she was like, hey, what's your email address? What's your, you know, mailing address? And she was like, I want your phone number too, right? I love that because I I know that at some point I would be so pleased to get a phone call from her and she took it another step. So I want us to take some of these relationships off of social media and actually be asking these people for their information and actually giving them a phone call. When I coach with the besties that I coach with in our accelerator program, we teach a strategy of getting in front of and having phone calls well, at least one time per quarter, four times per year with everyone who is in your database. And I know that, that you might be like, oh, I'm texting them or I'm commenting or I'm DMing them. No, actually pick up the phone because that is an art that has been lost. So I'm going to encourage you to start calling the people in your sphere. Now, 
let's go back to social media. We want to make sure that we are being social on social. And quite honestly, we move so quickly on social media that I think that like, I even have to check myself to say, how am I actually not only consuming and watching what my friends and family past clients are doing on social, but am I actually engaging with them? And again, with that engagement, I want you to be intentional about taking it off of social media. So for instance, if someone posts that their dog died or that they lost 50 pounds or this is their wedding anniversary, because you have already done the heavy lifting, you've gotten their phone number, like I, I just recently had a friend who posted a picture. She looks so cute on date night. So instead of commenting with all of the other 50 people that commented under that post, I screenshot her in her beautiful dress and I sent it to her via text message. And I said, girl, this deserves more than a comment. You look absolutely beautiful, okay? And then also don't be afraid to do a video message, right? If someone is doing something or you see something on social, you know, they have suffered a loss or are celebrating something, use that phone number, send them a personalized video message, right? And share, you know, just some thoughts with them, your condolences, your congratulations or anything like that. Now you are becoming more personalized and now you are on their radar, okay? And what typically happens is when you are on somebody's radar, they're going to start checking out what's happening with you. So this is why you want to make sure that you have a social media profile or presence that is active, right? You're sharing resources, you're sharing tips, you're sharing a little bit of real estate, but you know, something that they're going to want to come back to because you have gone the extra step to actually be concerned about them. And then here is my last suggestion. Okay. I am big on email marketing as it relates to anyone in my database and anyone in my sphere of influence. And again, it gives, it gives just a different connection point. So everyone who you are in contact with, simply ask them for their email address. You know, hey, what's your email address? I send out a monthly newsletter. I send out a quarterly newsletter. Or, and I would, I actually wouldn't call a newsletter because I don't call a newsletter. Hey, I like to keep my friends and family updated on what's happening in X city. You know, I like summer's coming up. I'm going to be sending out a big email about all of the best summer camps or vacation Bible schools or whatever like that. And now they are going to be used to or start getting used to seeing you as a resource because of these different email communications that you are going to send out. And these are just different ways to stand out amongst the people that you, you want to attract, you want to work with. Okay. So definitely, definitely, definitely like when it comes to that post that I saw on social media, I even have to be honest with myself and say, because this person wasn't quite my friend and we hadn't worked together, I never did the heavy lifting and reaching out and saying, Hey girl, what's the best phone number for you? Or what's your email address? I want to stay in contact with you in this way. So luckily I saw that post and I was able to get in front of them as an agent, but it would have been a missed opportunity, honestly, on my part. I can't depend on the algorithm to show them everything. I have to take it off social. Now, this is the last thing I want to say though, and this is just the reality of being in the business. There are going to be some people in your sphere that no matter how forward you are in what you're doing, they just might choose not to work with you. And you know what? That definitely stings a little bit. I will tell you, it is not my favorite activity. It's not my favorite thing to participate in or the favorite thing to happen to me. But I always like to make sure like what makes me even more upset if someone doesn't work with me is if I didn't do the heavy lifting. Because what I have found is that you know, when I'm staying in contact, when I'm emailing, when I'm calling, when I'm checking on them, you know, the times they have chosen someone else. Like I've had people literally reach out to me like Rosemary, I just want to give you a heads up. We're going to be listing our house soon because, and we, you know, and we would have gone with you, but because of X, right? It might be a previous relationship, like a realtor that they have maintained contact with, which I love that because I want my clients to do the same thing. Or, you know what, for whatever reason, they just chose to go a different route. But I'd like to make sure, did I do everything that I could do to actually nurture that relationship? And ironically, I've had people that haven't used me but have referred me, right? They felt obligated or for whatever reason, they decided to go in a different direction to serve their own needs. It's the craziest thing in the world, but they have referred me out 
over and over again to their friends and family. So this is why we want to do the heavy lifting. We want to make sure that we are intentional about being in front of our people. And I mean, that's that's about all you can do, but that's some work, right? It's some work to really, really nurture and maintain your database with your sphere of influence. So Bessie, I hope this is helpful. I hope that you actually did like didn't get all like in a tizzy because that friend didn't automatically think of you, but that you actually reached out and raised your hand and say, hey friend, I'm right here as your realtor. And what's your email address? Like I know you mentioned that you're not looking for anybody right away, but can I start sending you over a market report, right? Just earn the business. That's what we want to do. All right. All right. Now, if you made it to the end of this video and you are not subscribed to our channel, listen, what are you doing to like friend? Like I'm like the friend that's looking for a realtor. Like you're looking for support. You're looking for a real estate bestie. Go ahead and subscribe to our channel. And while you're at it, like we are on Facebook, the real estate bestie community. So check out rosemarylewis.com forward slash Facebook so that you can join our amazing community of real estate besties from all over the country. We are learning, we are growing together, and the only thing that is missing is you.